Hello, I'm so glad you could come pray with me on this uh, beautiful June morning. Um, this morning we are uh, continuing in Richard Foster's book, Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. In our sessions that we do on these Friday mornings where we seek to uh, learn about prayer, to deepen our prayer life, and to uh, take time to pray together. And we are in the second section of Foster's book, so we are now seeking that intimacy with God. In the first section, we uh, kind of sought to ground ourselves uh, in our understanding of prayer, and now we're, we're reaching upward to God and, and trying to find that intimacy with God uh, moving deeper. And so today's chapter is entitled Meditative Prayer, or it's also a style of prayer known as uh, Lectio Divina, uh, which means divine reading. And so this is a, a very fundamental form of Christian prayer that is bound to scripture. It is when we meditate on the scriptures, on God's word. And I want to read to you from Foster's book. In meditative prayer, the Bible ceases to be a quotation dictionary and becomes instead wonderful words of life that lead us to the word of life. It differs even from the study of scripture, whereas the study of scripture centers on exegesis or um, understanding everything mentally um, from a more um, studious point, I guess. Uh, the meditation upon scripture centers on internalizing and personalizing the passage. The written word becomes a living word addressed to us. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, just as you do not analyze the words of someone you love, but accept them as they are said to you, accept the word of scripture and ponder it in your heart as Mary did. That is all. That is meditation. Uh, Bonhoeffer also suggests that you might spend an entire week on a single text a Foster's suggestion is that we take a single event or a parable or a few verses or even just a single word and allow that to take root within us. And so in meditative prayer, in Lecto Divino, um, we use our mind, um, the imagination section of our mind, uh, not the analytical part of our brain, but we open up our imagination and seek to engage all of our senses. In that, I mean that Say you were looking at a passage where Jesus is near uh, the uh, Sea of Galilee, then you would seek to hear the water uh, lapping up on the beach. You would uh, try to imagine uh, the, the smell of the salt in the air, or the breeze coming across, kind of feel that on your skin. So you try to engage your senses to fully imagine yourself as uh, part of the scene or um, experiencing the scripture as if it was being spoken directly to you, through you, and in you. Um, so you, you, you seek to make the story your own, imagining yourself within the story. And, and at different times and different stories, you might take different roles uh, within that story, become a different character within that story as you meditate upon it. But instead of just observing what happens and dissecting it to learn something, instead we seek to participate in it, to experience something. You know, our imaginations, or at least mine, I don't know about yours, but my imagination can go really, really wild. <laughs> it can take me way, way out there. Um, so the nice thing about this, about meditating on scripture, is the scripture helps to keep you grounded, keeps you bound, um, <clears throat> keeps you from letting your mind just go absolutely crazy. <clears throat> when we uh, do the... the um, meditative prayer, this style of prayer where we're centering it around scripture. Uh, we also, as we're using our imaginations, we also wind up incorporating our emotions as well. So in this way, this type of prayer speaks not only through our mind and our imagination, but also to our hearts. Um, I can remember a time that I was a scripture reader on a Sunday morning for church and uh, the scripture had been given to me a week or two before. And so I had meditated on that scripture, uh, knowing that I was going to be reading it as part of worship. One thing I had not done, though, was to say the scripture out loud during my time of meditation. And so this is something also in, in part of that hearing the, the verse, the parable, the scene, whatever it is. We can also speak it out loud as part of our meditative prayer. 
Since I had not spoken it out loud, what happened was when I got up there on Sunday morning to read the scripture, I once I heard the words coming out of my mouth and I heard them resonating in my head, I became very, very emotional. Um, I don't know that I would have been able to set those emotions completely aside because I tend to get emotional sometimes on Sunday mornings, uh, but I think I would have been uh, better equipped and would have already probably processed a lot of those emotions if during my time of meditative prayer, I had spoken the text out loud and heard it uh, in that way as well. Um, back to uh, Foster's book. He says, it is important for us to understand the scripture intellectually, of course, but if we have not felt it emotionally, we have not truly understood it. And so um, one of the things that we do when we uh, move into this time, because we have these wild imaginations, or some of us do, um, we ask God to sanctify our imagination as we move into this process to make sure that the evil one's not getting at us and working that imagination against us, but instead just allowing God to work through our imagination instead. So we ask God to sanctify our imagination. Foster says, uh, so many passages of scripture provide a touchstone for meditative prayer. Uh, texts such as, be still and know that I am God. Abide in my love. I am the good shepherd. Rejoice in the Lord always. In each case, we are seeking to discover God near us and are longing to encounter his presence. Another text from John 14, 27, when Jesus says, my peace I give to you. The wonderful thing about such experience, experiences is that the self is quite forgotten. Foster says, we no longer, we are no longer worried about how we can make ourselves more at peace, for we are attending to the impartation of peace within our hearts. No longer do we laboriously think up ways to act peacefully, for acts of peace spring spontaneously from within. It is an ethical call to repentance, to change, to obedience uh, that most clearly distinguishes Christian meditation from its Eastern and secular counterparts, Foster tells us. Uh, we are called to life-transforming obedience because we have encountered the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Christ is truly present among us to heal us, to forgive us, to change us, to empower us. Uh, and so this is um, a process, uh, a style of prayer that, again, doesn't just come naturally. It's something that we need to experience over and over and over um, to move into it uh, in, a, in a deeper way. Just like with any uh, relationship, it takes time to build intimacy, right? And this is one of those prayers of intimacy. And so the more we approach God's presence through God's word and meditate on God's word, the, deep, the, the more we are deepening that relationship uh, as, we, uh, as we move forward. And so at this point, when we have this infatuation with God and God's word, as we're seeking to, to know God better, we can feed on that infatuation uh, as a way to build our desire to know God better. And through his word, of course, is, is one of the best ways to do that. It's how we are seeking God's heart through God's word. Again, I wanted to uh, lift up something else from Foster's book. In meditative prayer, God addresses us personally. This is not something we make happen. And then I love he shares uh, from Thomas Merton writes, anyone who imagines he can simply begin meditating without praying for the desire and grace to do so will soon give up. But the desire to meditate and the grace to begin meditating should be taken as an implicit promise of further graces. Foster says, the desire has been given to you, I know, otherwise you would not be reading these words or participating in this group. Further graces will come as they are needed. And that is, of course, exactly how God works. Uh, he, he shows up and offers us those graces as we need them. And so today, when we spend time in prayer, I encourage you to uh, find uh, maybe your favorite scripture, uh, maybe uh, your favorite parable or your favorite story from scripture. 
Um, or if you are someone from uh, First Christian Church and you participated in the My One Word, you may have a word or uh, and you should have a scripture that goes with that that you are using as your focus for the entire year. My word for this year, uh, that is my focus to, to guide me, uh, my spiritual practices, is fire. And my scripture comes from Psalm 104, verse 4. And I want to read, read it to you in both the, the uh, New Revised Standard Version and then in the Passion Translation. It is, you make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. And then from the Passion Translation, you make your messengers into winds of the spiritual. All your ministers become flames of fire. And so as you are seeking, you can hear those, those to me uh, speak to me very, very differently. And so as you're seeking to find uh, a scripture uh, that you might want to meditate on, I encourage you to look at some different translations. One of my favorites uh, that has, is relatively new to me is the Passion Translation. Uh, the whole Bible is not translated yet. It is um, the New Testament and the Psalms at this point. So, uh, but it is a wonderful translation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nancy, your word is fearless and you are, I'm, I can see where that's taking on new meaning for you right now. And that's what's wonderful about as we meditate on these words and we meditate on these scriptures, how God uses them to speak to us for whatever we are going through at the time. It has been amazing to me how the word fire and how these particular, this particular text and these different translations has spoken to me already uh, this year in so many different ways. And God has revealed so many different things uh, to me about fire that I never had thought about before. But if I hadn't stopped to take time to meditate on that and ask God to reveal those to me, to open up my imagination and my heart, I don't think I would have ever thought of those all on my own. Uh, this is my journal uh, that I use and I write these things down as God uh, speaks to me and, and opens my heart up to, to new ideas and, and new visions. Uh, then I record those in my uh, prayer journal here. And so you might want to do something like that as well. So today, as we uh, take time to pray together, I encourage you to, uh, again, maybe seek a, a favorite scripture. That's a really good place to start. Um, we'll begin by asking God to sanctify our imaginations. I encourage you to do that first. And then after you have done that, uh, read or recite your um, your scripture text or um, just bring the story uh, back to your recollection and then ask God to reveal his heart and how you are connecting to him through this particular verse or text or story. Um, and I pray that you have a, a new revelation today as you seek the heart of God during this time of prayer.
God is amazing and reaches out into our hearts and minds in amazing ways. And I pray that that was your experience during those brief four minutes. And I encourage you to continue uh, to seek God through this practice of meditative prayer, through uh, Lectio Divina. Um, it's a way to get to know God through God's word and just to sit with God, um, hearing from God. Before we close uh, with Foster's prayer, as is our habit, I do want to tell you that we will I will not be here next Friday morning uh, as I will be watching grandchildren for the weekend, uh, for the holiday weekend. And so I encourage you to keep your habit, though, of coming uh, together on or coming to prayer on Friday mornings at this time. Uh, so you might go back and if you've missed a session, uh, watch a session that you've missed. Uh, or go back to a session that uh, especially spoke to you or a, se a session that was especially challenging to you might also be a good idea. Um, but I do encourage you to do that. And then in two weeks, uh, I will be back here again with Come Pray With Me. I so appreciate you um, being part of this group. Um, I ask you to uh, continue your practices of prayer. Let us close with Foster's Prayer. Lord, I seek now to meditate on your disturbing words. I came to bring fire to the earth. Luke 12, 49. What do they mean? What do they mean for me? Are there things in me that need to be burned out? Pride? Fear? Anger? Consume them, each one. Are there things in this world that you want destroyed? The systems of religion we use to hide from you? The artificial lines we draw that separate us from each other, black from white, men from women, parents from children. The terrible injustices done to the weak and the helpless the unspeakable violence done to women and to unborn children. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for Jesus' sake. Amen. It's amazing how God gives us just what we need to hear in the time we need to hear it. May God bless you and keep you this week and the next as you seek him through prayer. Thanks for being here. God bless.